whenever I talk about Ecuador, people are like, you just light up. Whenever you talk about that job, it's just like you come to life. And I just think because it was so deeply relational and honestly, I mean, I often say it feels like I was created for that job. Hey guys, I'm Greg. And I'm Ashley. And this is the Living and Learning Podcast. On this podcast, we speak with fascinating guests to uncover how they've experienced life change by crossing cultures, crossing borders, and expanding their worldview. So let's dive in. Hey, Greg, it's so good to be here with you again. I am uh, excited actually for everyone to chime into this one. It is one of my favorite topics that we actually do within Living and Learning, and that is uh, discipleship with our resident coordinators. And so I'd love to hear maybe a little bit of a rundown of what you thought of the episode with CK. Yeah, it was great listening to your conversation uh, with CK as you guys kind of unpack what is the role of a resident coordinator. Uh, CK is unique in that she got to do this role for three full years. So she had six semesters in our Ecuador program. Uh, But we do have resident coordinators in all of our program locations. Um, But specifically within the Ecuador context, uh, CK shared about her experience And there's a lot of things that she shared about, but I think the piece that um, really stood out to me was the benefit and the value of even though this is a short-term experience, right? It's four months or three months. It can really be transformative in a student's life as they um, are known and seen um, maybe in a new way that they hadn't before. Um, And so I think, yeah, CK kind of unpacks the role of a resident coordinator is to to know and walk with and uh, have fun and journey alongside these students as they experience their semester abroad. Um, And she shares about one specific student who was hesitant maybe to be open and vulnerable because it was such a short-term period. Um, And and CK shares her prayer uh, really during that time and, and how that opened up conversations. So great, great time that you had with CK. Excited for everybody to hear this conversation. So let's jump into it. I am so excited to be here today with Christina Garibay. She was one of our resident coordinators and actually did six semesters with us, which is an incredible amount of time. And so she is going to speak into what a resident coordinator is today. But before that, let's hear a little bit about what life has been like since you've been back from Ecuador. Yeah. So I've been back from Ecuador for about two years um, and immediately started a grad program that you happen to be in as well. Yes. So it's spiritual formation, spiritual formation and soul care. It is so wonderful. Um, when I first got back, life was a little bit slower because it was during COVID. Um, but within this past year have built just an incredible community, have been involved in church and just really love the grad program that I'm in. Um, and I'm also currently working for Biola. So a lot love of life that. revolves around that. Okay. Yeah. So Biola is your life right now. Yes. That's yes. good. Anything else fun happen in the last oh, few weeks? Yes. You know, something kind of small. Um, <laughs> I recently got engaged. I mean, you can flash your ring at the yeah. camera if you want. So it's a beauty. <laughs> Um, met my yes. fiance in grad school and at work. Um, fun fact, he's in my class. Yes. Ash knows him well, which is great. So that's been really exciting recently. It's awesome. Yeah. Congrats, CK. Thank you. So awesome. Another fun thing about CK is you might know her as CK. Uh, so if we reference CK, that's because all of the Ecuador students would call her CK. All right. Uh, So today we're going to focus in on discipleship Mm -hmm. uh, through like being a resident coordinator. So that's Mm -hmm. one of the heart uh, pieces of our program, one of the core pieces that we do. And that is why I'm excited to talk about it today. So let's dive in. So what is a resident coordinator? I mean, a lot of people that are listening to this have zero clue what a resident coordinator does. Yeah. A resident coordinator just carries so many different um, jobs, but their main job is to care for the students that come to Ecuador. And so we have about four resident coordinators um, that live in the apartment with the students and their main focus is discipleship um, to get to know and walk with and build a trusting relationship with our students Mm -hmm. so they can feel safe and and be able to open up and experience the Lord in these really sweet and deep ways. Um, Also, they plan events. So 
the students can really get to know the culture of Ecuador and get to experience really fun things. Um, and so we do things like planning trips to um, zip line through Mindo yes. and go see waterfalls and baños. And um, we do a Chiva, which is like a fun party bus. And so just... What, what is that? A, I want to hear yes, a little bit more about the yes. Chiva. A Chiva is a party bus in Ecuador where they just play really fun music and we just dance like for two hours straight. And it's how we end our semester together or one of the final things that we do together. So fun. It is so much fun. Um, so yeah, we're there for the really fun moments with students. But more than that, the hard, the difficult, the challenging pieces where students have to transition in culture and yeah. um, where they just feel like, yeah, they can feel um, they can feel known and seen and understand more of how the Lord views them. And so we have either weekly or biweekly one on ones with okay. our students. Um, and that's where it kind of opens up these conversations, these moments of trust. And then we get to live life in between with them. And that gets that allows them to get to know us more. So yeah. something as an RC that I loved was our kitchen conversations. And that was just the impromptu conversations that we would have where we would be making dinner together or sitting in the kitchen and questions would come up or things that the students were re like wrestling through. And mm. those were real life conversations where they felt heard. And I felt like that just really created a foundation for students to feel even more comfortable in the one-on-one yeah. -on -one situations. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And then you guys do house nights as well. Yes. What is that all about? Yeah. So house nights is um, a focus on building community even further within your house because you live together. There can be so many different. How many, factors. how many students in an apartment? I mean, it's tricky with the guy's side. It's yes. like could be seven to 10 in a guy's house. How many in a girl's house? Around typically. 10. Okay. Typically, yeah, the average is about 10 women. Um, and you have, you know, three to four people in a room, which is really fun. And then there are moments you step on each other's toes. So I think house nights are meant to create intentional time with each other to remember that we care for each other and we want to invest in one another. And so house night would usually look like, and every RC did this differently, but a lot of the times we would pair up two roommates or two people from the house and they would cook dinner for the whole group. And nice. then we would either have something like a testimony and getting to hear more of who they were, or we'd have a fun activity. Like one of my favorite house nights, we learned to dance all together and we recorded it and we just loved to be silly together. So it was just probably two to two to four hours of intentional time with one another in the middle of like a crazy week where we could just mm -hmm. slow down and spend time together. I love that. Yeah. Can you describe, I often get asked what the apartments are like? Yeah. Give me kind of a brief rundown of maybe the apartment that you've lived in. Yeah. Like the, the look of it or the feel or what? I guess both. Like okay. how many rooms typically, how many bathrooms, like yeah. what, what is it like? Uh, I mean, if we think of apartments, it's like a skyscraper kind of thing. Yeah. Um, that's kind of what it feels like in keto, would you say? Yeah. I mean, I felt like Poxy felt like a home, like a house. Okay. We had four bedrooms. Um, and then again, anywhere from two to four girls shared a room. And in Poxy specifically, each each room had their own bathroom. And then we had an extra outside in the common area. We had a giant living room, um, a family room, a dining room and a kitchen. And it just provided, I mean, it was, it was just beautiful and it felt homey. Um, and it just felt like there was enough space for all the students to live comfortably. Yeah. 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 Sweet. Um, how do you, Maybe you can speak into this. Maybe you don't do this in part of your resident coordinator role, but I also get asked, how do roommate scenarios get paired? Yeah. I, do, you, do you have any clue of how that happens? Yeah. I mean, if I can remember correctly, um, I think a lot of thought goes into that. We ask them questions beforehand and we take those things into consideration. Um like, are you a night owl, an early bird? Are you messy? Are you clean? Like just, just things that would make it easier to live with one another. Um, and then we do really try and focus on mixing up our group. So if you're from the same school, we like to separate a little bit just so you get to meet more yeah. people. Um, but 
we also pray over it and just yes. I've heard that our, a lot yes the staff we you, pray through the, these decisions yes we can we can only do so much and we don't know students before coming in so it's really trusting the Lord with what he desires for that to even yeah. look like I love that yeah all right. CK has always said this is her favorite job. So I'd love to hear like why this has been your favorite job. Yeah. What is so sweet that even after Ecuador, the whenever I talk about Ecuador, people are like, you just light up whenever you talk about that job. It's just like you come to life. And I just think because it was so deeply relational and Honestly, I mean, I often say it feels like I was created for that job yeah. because it was so discipleship focused and it was walking with students, not only in their easy moments, but in mm. the really hard moments. And to yeah. me, that is true discipleship. Yeah. And so I think I understood more the heart of God in action instead of just oh. in word. And it was it was the gospel come to life for me. And yeah. so it just was so exciting and so beautiful and for sure challenging in a lot of ways, but I think that made me rely more on the Lord. And so I just, yeah, it felt like I, I relied so much on God and got to see people in their fullest versions of who they were. And mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, as you've done one-on-ones, do you have like particular stories that you could share with us of man, this was an awesome one-on-one -on -one and I've seen life change in this, this regard. Yeah. Yeah. One that comes to mind was actually one of my students who was pretty hesitant with me at first. And I remember even taking that a little bit personally yeah. and feeling like, oh my gosh, what am I doing wrong? And, and I remember at one point her feeling like, she's like, you don't know who I am and I don't know if it's worth getting to know yeah. you in just this short amount of time. And I remember praying in that moment and just asking the Lord, like, she's right. I don't know who she is. And I just remember him saying, but I do. And through that, we had this really beautiful conversation of really, ultimately, I, I am not going to know the person sitting across from me, only what they share. Um, but the Lord knows their heart and what they need. And so I think it really, not only for her showed me that I, I was in partnership with the Holy Spirit and I did want what was best for her, but it, it showed me that I could trust the Lord working in somebody else's life. And actually from there, she went from being really hesitant with our one-on-ones to asking for one every week. And oh, wow. yes. And we still keep in touch. How often does that happen? Like the, the every week, every week. Mm. Um, it really depended on the semester, but I would say it was a few students a semester. I mean, maybe one to three that yeah. would ask for every week. So yeah, a majority were biweekly. Yeah, that's the yeah. That's kind of the um living and learning rule or whatever. Yeah. Bi weekly. But some students are like, Man, I love this so much. Yes. Let's do it every week. Exactly. Yeah. And there was even another student, um, who you may have had on this podcast, but okay, she yes, yes, she came in and um had so many questions about Christianity and just had these really honest conversations. And she even started like a Bible study with one of the staff members, and we had multiple conversations. And she just grew so much more in our understanding of the Lord um, because she was asking those really hard questions and wrestling with it. And when I came back here during the midst of COVID mm. and was having a hard time building community, she was actually somebody that reached out to me wow. and we started a Bible study together. She was the one who suggested that we started it. So yes. just even seeing when you disciple people that they can actually turn around and do the same for you as yeah. well. And it was just a beautiful, like she's a dear friend in my life now and somebody that I really look up to. So it's really yeah. cool to see the growth even post Ecuador. Yeah. I love that. Wow. Well, uh, you've heard what discipleship resident coordinator life is in Ecuador, and this could be part of your experience mm -hmm. when you come and join us. So thank you, Christina Garibay, yeah. for coming with us today and sharing on the podcast. Have a great day. Thank you, CK, for sitting down with us this week to chat about discipleship with resident coordinators. It was a pleasure. You can catch us on our next episode as we talk with Dr. Micah Hughes, the academic director of our newest program, Baltimore Urban Studies, known as The Bus. 
The bus is a Christ-centered campus for public health, reconciliation, and spiritual transformation. We'll hear an overview of the program as well as touch down specifically on the academic courses offered. I also want to let you know that on September 24th, 2022, Living and Learning is hosting our second annual 5K Fun Run. This is a fundraiser with all proceeds going back into Living and Learning. We're launching a new scholarship for students um, as well as the startup costs for Baltimore Urban Studies. There'll be an in-person event happening in Baltimore as well as virtual option to run from anywhere. You can register on our website. Again, that's September 24th, 2022. For more information about Living and Learning, check out our show notes. There you'll find links to our website, newsletter, and all of our social media accounts. Hey, do us a favor and subscribe to the podcast and leave a review. That is the best way for other people to find out about what we're doing here. Thanks for taking the time to listen and we'll see you next time.